We're back talking about sex offender laws with former prosecutor Wendy Murphy. Murphy says the laws, if anything, should be tougher. And Radley Balco, who writes about things like this for Reason Magazine, he says, Wendy, you're out of your mind. And <laughs> what do you mean she's out of her mind? Really? <laughs> well, I, I think there's a, a, a mistaken notion that we have in this country where we're not really serious about a problem until we make it illegal, until we make something illegal, right? That the law is the final solution. Um, and, you know, I mean, children, uh, children, teenagers, minors have been having sex for generations, right? As long as there have been teens and sex, teens have been having sex. Um, and what I think, really think we need is, I mean, the adults in these teens' lives need to step up. Uh, and deal with the situation with some subtlety and some nuance. Um, the criminal well, justice system has... That's all nice, but what's wrong with this extra input? And she says examples like the one we just heard almost never happen. Well, then, if they almost never happen, then there's no problem with changing the law to make sure that they never happen, right? I mean, a 19-year-old... How would you do that? Well, a 19-year-old who has sex with a 15-year-old is not the same crime as a 40-year-old who has sex with an 8- or 9-year-old, right? Why are, we, why are they both called sexual assault? Why are they both going on the sex offender list? What comes with these registries is we also get lawmakers who, every year, they have to pass another, another law showing how tough we're going to be on sex offenders. So they start zoning sex offenders out of different parts of the city, and they start expanding. You can't live, you know, within 500 yards of a place where children gather. Then it's 1,000. Then it's 2,500. There are places in Florida where we have sex offenders living under bridges. There are places in Georgia where we have them living in remote woods because there's nowhere else for them to go. And some of these people were convicted of these Romeo and Juliet situations. Some were urinating in public. It's so great I mean, to we tell need... these lofty stories. The well, fact listen, is public urination never... is puts you on the registry in it some states. In some states. Streaking and it depends. Puts you on the registry. No, it depends. And most states that's not true. Something like two percent of all sex offenders are on registries. That's a problem. That number should be higher. Probably the main reason we have sex registries is the outrage over the rape and murder of a seven year old New Jersey girl named Megan Kenka. Please, please help us find our daughter. We want to bring her back safely. What? No. 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 As her family grieved, police searched the house across the street where three convicted sex offenders lived. Jesse Temendiquas told police he lured Megan into his house by promising to show her a puppy. Instead, he molested and strangled her, then took her body in his toolbox to a nearby park. Within days, residents reacted by collecting signatures to pass a law protecting children. They wanted to make sure parents and communities were notified when a convicted sex offender moved in. No one is safe, and we really have to protect our kids. New Jersey lawmakers acted quickly. Other states and the federal government followed suit to protect innocent children. Megan's law will protect tens of millions of families from the dread of what they do not know. Sounds like a good idea, Radley. Protect people from what they do not know. Look, I, I, when it comes to people who prey on small, innocent children, uh, who rape and murder innocent children, I say they should go to prison for the rest of their lives. Don't ever let them out in society again. This idea of taking someone, putting them in prison for 10 or 15 years, telling them they've paid their debt to society, then making it impossible for them to ever live a normal life again once they get out, you don't have to have any sympathy for sex offenders to understand why that's a bad idea. You're basically inviting them to commit crimes again because you're giving them no way to ever become legitimate. This don't is a, this is a completely on... false argument. The problem is not the registry. It's that he was convicted of a sex crime, which is a public record. Who are you to tell the public they can't judge rapists harshly? I'm, I'm, t I'm saying we should put them in jail for life. Uh, I'm saying don't, the, don't let them oh, out. Mr. Humane. Let's never well, let them out. What would you do, Wendy? What? I'm saying, I'm saying two things. Number one, if they want forgiveness and redemption, it would be awfully good if when they get out, they could do something other than hide and pretend they never committed the crime. Because you can never be forgiven if you put it all under a rock. Oh, the registries are good because they allow for some possibility of social forgiveness. And honesty helps. Do you think if, if a sex offender moves into a neighborhood and all the neighbors find out that that person on the list, their first reaction is going to be forgiveness? Frank? I would have forgiven Frank if he had 20-second conversation with me. But he's not a child molester. Well, we have to you end it there. You brought him on there. this show. Thank you, Wendy Murphy and Radley Balco. Now, I'd like to share one more story that illustrates how this urge to solve problems by passing more laws, which is natural, always creates unintended consequences. I accept that the law's proponents mean well. 
They think sexual registries will stop horrible crimes, but government is always a blunt instrument. First, to punish people for child molestation, you have to define what's a child? At what age does a girl have the right to give consent to sex? As we said before, different states define that differently. The age of consent varies from 16 in the yellow states on this map, 17 in the blue states, 18 in the red states. I can just see the reasonable adults debating about that. We don't want kids having sex, but when is a kid no longer a kid? When they can drive, when they can vote? Teens do sometimes have sex, and sometimes they lie about their age. Should that wreck? A boy's life? Ricky Blackman says the strict laws wrecked his life. He joins us now with his wife Ashley and his mom, Mary Duvall. So, Mary, when Ricky was 16, he dated a girl who told him she was 15. Right. Was she 15? No, she wasn't. So, what happened? Uh, this young lady um, and Ricky dated for a while. They met at a club for 16 to 20 year olds. And she told him there she was 15, and a few weeks later she ran away from home. The police questioned Ricky. Uh, he told him he didn't know where she's at, but he did admit he having sex with her twice. told Ricky, you told the truth. You said, yeah, I had been with her. Yeah. She, she turned out to be how old? 13. That's what the cops, when they questioned, they told me. So, Mary, what happened next? Two weeks later, Ricky was tossed to the ground, guns pulled, and charged as an adult at 17 with two counts of sexual abuse, third degree under Iowa law. And they said he might go to jail for 20, 20 years. years. Absolutely. So you plea bargained. Yeah, when they told me I could face that, that many years in prison, I was scared. I, I was just young. I didn't know what to do. And by plea bargaining, you're put on this sex registry. You're, you're a tier three criminal, which is the most dangerous category. Yeah. And Mary, what's life been like? It was hell. The people in the community, they weren't aware of the truth. They saw Ricky on the registry. They didn't know the truth, so they thought he was just some, some monster. A neighbor videotaped. Absolutely. Yes, he did. And he came to me and said he would never leave my son alone until I moved the child rapist away. Sex offender is written on your driver's license? It was. Until my mom passed law. So. You tried to get a job and couldn't? What the, what the McDonald's manager tell you? Uh, well, well, on the McDonald's application, it asked if, he was a, if I was a registered sex offender, and I answered yes. Uh, my probation officer told me I had to answer yes. So I answered yes, and when I handed it to him, he told me I was just a liability to the company, and uh, I'd make them lose business if he hired me. Well, this at least is a story with a happy ending that it, it shows you have no sight, but you, by yourself, just about, changed the law in Oklahoma. So. Yes, I did. And uh, it took things. a lot of uh, determination. I love well, my son. And Ricky's off the registry now because you changed the law. November 2nd last year, yes. Congratulations. And on that note, thank you, Ricky, Ashley, Mary. Thank, thank you, you for coming in.